ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز واعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم انما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا الى الجنه او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام my dear respected elders brothers and sisters my lecture today inshallah my khutbah today will be about the importance of knowledge the sanctity of the scholars why we should respect the scholars how much knowledge we must gain and how much is obligatory upon us to gain and how much is optional since the beginning of islam the deen the religion has been spread by knowledge the sanctity of islam the credibility of islam has been maintained because that knowledge has been passed on and taught by people who have been qualified to do so knowledge was passed down from person to person from heart to heart from scholar to scholar and that is how we got the knowledge that we have today the knowledge that we have it is referenced the concept of isnad and referencing that we have in today's academic papers it is something that islam started 1400 years ago that where did you get this hadith from where did this saying come from who said it which book was it written in that re- referencing those footnotes they are an islamic concept which have been taken and put into the west when writing papers this referencing in arabic is called isnad and according to a saying which is prominent amongst the scholars laula al isnad la qala man sha'a ma sha'a if it wasn't for the concept of isnad then whoever wanted to say anything could say it anybody who wanted to say something he could say it why because there's no reference anybody could fabricate a hadith say that the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this this and this anybody could make up an islamic ruling from his own pocket but the reality is that the deen has always relied upon this referencing this isnad going back to the source of knowledge which is the quran and the sunnah so this is how the knowledge got to us from scholar to scholar from person to person and even the books that were written they referenced back to the quran and the sunnah and the scholars uh, of the past the pious predecessors the aslaf the sahaba etc the knowledge the purpose behind it is to gain the khashiya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain an awareness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if a person he has what is deemed as knowledge what people call knowledge the ability to give khutbas the ability to give lectures the ability to write books but that person he is very far away from islam he is not practicing what he preaches or even in some cases that person is not even a muslim yet he writes books about islam then the purpose of that knowledge is not being fulfilled the purpose of knowledge is to get that awareness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a person to become better for a person to become closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna ma yakhsha allah min ibadihi al ulama indeed the people that have the true khashiya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the scholars and if a person is not developing that khashiya but he is able to talk and write and 
give lectures and do everything that a person who, who is deemed a scholar in this day and age, he can do all of these things, but in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is not an alim, he is not a scholar, because he is not practicing what he preaches. There are cases in which non-Muslims have actually written volumes and volumes of books which are about Islam. There is actually a mu'ajam, a dictionary, that has been written about a hadith. How do you do this? What, what is the purpose of this book? You would actually open up, for example, you want to find out in which books Innam al-A'malu bin Niyat is found. Very famous hadith. So you would open up this dictionary, you look up this, these words, Innam al-A'malu bin Niyat, it's all in alphabetical order, and on the side, there will be the reference in which this hadith could be found. Bukhari, Abu Dawud, Muslim, Nasai, etc. Whatever, wherever that hadith is, you will find. But this book has been written by a Hindu. A person who doesn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tawheed, he commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but yet he's written this huge volume of a book which is completely about Islam. So this goes to prove really that a scholar is not a person who knows a lot of things and who can write a lot of things, but the scholar is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared, the one who has the true khashi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does a person become a scholar? He actually has to take it upon himself that he will learn, he will seek knowledge. <coughs> The Prophet ﷺ mentioned many virtues of the people of, uh, who go out to seek knowledge. In a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever adopts the path of knowledge, whoever treads the path of knowledge, Allah wa ta'ala will make the way of Jannah easy for him. How does the way of Jannah become easy for a person? Because... He is practicing Islam with the true insight. He knows what is important right now, what is fault right now, what needs to be given priority at that very moment in time, what is halal, what is haram, what is permissible, what is not permissible. When he practices with that insight, he knows what he is doing. When it comes to his religion, then obviously the way to Jannah is going to be made easy for him. According to another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, when a person, he sets out to seek knowledge, all of the creation pray for him. The birds in their nests, the ants in their holes, every single creature on this earth prays for his forgiveness. Why is that? Because this creation knows that when this person will become a scholar, he will become an alim, he will teach a hundred people, two hundred people, a thousand people, two thousand people, five thousand people. And these thousands of people are going to be practicing Islam as it should be practiced. And when people are practicing Islam as it should be practiced, then khayr and goodness will descend on this earth. The adab, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be lifted. Because people are going away from his guidance. They are getting towards guidance. They are going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ultimately, because of this person's efforts in seeking knowledge, khair is spreading. The punishment is being lifted. And because of that, this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ants, the birds, the lions, all the creatures are actually also saved from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they pray for that person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him and make him a source of khayr for all of the creation so that that punishment can be lifted from us. That's why the animals pray for that person. There's a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ was standing and a janazah passed by. The Prophet ﷺ said, Mustarihun aw mustarahun. He is either mustarih or he is mustarah. The Sahaba said, what does that mean, Ya Rasulullah? Mustarih, Mustarah. Mustarih means a person who is relaxed, in a good situation, at peace. 
Mustarih. The Prophet ﷺ said, this person, if he was a good person, he was obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is Mustarih. He is in the state of relaxation right now. He is happy right now. But if he was a Fajr, if he was disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is Mustarah, meaning people are at ease from his going. The animals are at ease from his going. Everybody breathes a collective sigh of relief that because of this person, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was above our heads. Now he's gone, at least we can you know, be easy and relax that we won't be punished because of this person. So mustarah. The same concept is mentioned in this hadith that when a person seeks knowledge, all of the creation pray for him because they know that because of the khayr that this person is spreading, his the 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 adab and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being re- removed. So how much knowledge is act- actually obligatory upon us? This is the understanding that we must all have. It's a very simple concept. On a day-to-day basis, the knowledge that we need to know about what is halal, what is haram, what is permissible, what is impermissible, and the knowledge that we need to know so that we can practice our Islam. How do we purify our bodies? How do we pray our salat? How do we give zakat when it's due? How do we fast? That much knowledge is obligatory upon every single Muslim, male and female. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ وَمُسْلِمًا The seeking of knowledge is a fariwa, it's an obligation upon every Muslim male and every Muslim female. This is how much knowledge is obligatory upon every single person. Now say a person wants to open a business. Now his day-to-day life will be spent running a business. At that point, it becomes also obligatory for him to know what is halal and haram related to that business. What is permissible and what is impermissible related to that business. So this also now becomes an obligatory obligation upon him and he needs to learn about that. A person starts a medical practice. He needs to know what is halal and haram for him as a doctor, what he can, what he cannot do as a doctor. It becomes obligatory for him now to learn that branch of knowledge. So on a day-to-day basis, the knowledge that a person needs to practice his daily life, he needs to know what are the boundaries that he needs to adhere to, what he needs to implement so that he can be a practicing Muslim. It is well known about Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he used to make sure that every person who is starting a business, he knows the rules and regulations of business and he would not give anybody a business license until that person knew what the rights and wrongs were related to that particular business. So the same thing applies to all of us. That when we are starting something, any kind of venture, then we need to know what is the right and wrong about uh, this particular business. And then the second obligation, the second category, is what is known as Fard Kifaya. What does Fard Kifaya mean? Fard Kifaya means that if there is one person or two people in the community that are practicing that particular thing, then the obligation is lifted from the rest of the community. And that is that within the community, there needs to be at least one or two people that are, have a broader knowledge of Islam, that can be turned to, to ask questions, that, that, that can be turned to, to ask whether something is halal or haram, whether what the rulings are on divorce, what the rulings are on marriage, so that person can be a reference and he can be turned to, an alim, a scholar, an imam, who knows these rulings and regulations, so that he can teach the community. That imam can become, will become the focal point of the community, so that people will ask him and reference him. So it is a collective obligation, which is known as fard kifaya, to have at least one person in the community who can uh, answer these questions, which actually leads me to my final point that I'm going to finish the khutbah with, the respect of the scholars and 
uh, encouraging our young people to take this line, to take this path, to become scholars of the future, inshallah. There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which he said, he gave a very stark warning. He said in this hadith, in Allah la yantazi'u al-ilma intiza'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to just snatch up knowledge that is going to disappear off the face of the earth. That's not going to happen. وَلَكِنْ يَقْبِضُ الْعِلْمِ بِقَبْضِ الْعُلَمَاءِ But what's going to happen, he's going to take away the scholars one by one. One is going to die, then the next one is going to die, and then the next one is going to die. And then what's going to happen? When there are no scholars left around, اِتَّخَذَ النَّاسُ رُؤَسَاءَ جُهَالًا People are going to take people who are not knowledgeable as leaders. And they're going to ask them. ثُمَّ سُئِلُوا They're going to be asked questions about Islam. فَأَفْتَوُوا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ They're going to give fatwas without knowledge. فَضَلُّوا وَأَضَلُّوا And they are going to be misguided themselves and they're going to also misguide other people. So this is a very real warning that the Prophet ﷺ gave which we are seeing actually in this day and age, in this country in particular. A huge shortage of Imams everywhere. A huge uh, vacuum left in masajid, in, in centers, in communities where there is no focal point, where there is no scholar, where there is no Imam. And because of that, the community basically is left like a, uh, like a ship without a captain. Like an army without a general. So this is again something we need to understand that because of this shortage, it means that we are not doing what we need to in terms of preparing scholars within the communities. So it's important to, to understand that just like there is a career path of the, of our kids to become doctors or engineers or software engineers, computer programmers, etc. To be an imam is also a career path. It is also something that we should consider for our children. And the benefit of that will be twofold. The first benefit is that obviously because they are doing work for the community, they will be actually having, uh, making a living. And the second point is that they will also be preparing themselves for the hereafter and preparing others for the hereafter. And this is, this is the biggest thing that we can Think about. Think about any other worldly profession. The only way that a person can actually use that profession to benefit his hereafter is, of course, when he changes his intention and he does it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for the most part, if he donates to the masjid, then that's the only thing that he can do. In most cases. But the alim, night and day, he is leading people, he is calling people, he is teaching people, he is telling people what is right and what is wrong, what is halal and haram. So when people are guided, then he is making his own hereafter. If we push our children to do this, then we will be getting the same reward that our children are getting. So we should consider this also that we need to encourage our children to become the imams of the future. Communities are being built, masajid are being built, left, right and center, everywhere. We see masajid being expanded. When we don't have true and good leadership, then, like I said, these communities are going to be like ships without a captain. We need to understand this very, very clearly and we need to understand that we need to do something about it. And that will only come when we have the value of knowledge in our hearts when we have the knowledge of the scholars in our hearts. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that لَيْسَ minna, He is not from amongst us. مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَلَمْ يُعِزَّ كَبِيرَنَا وَلَمْ يُوَقِّرُ عَلَى مَعَنَا أَوْ كُمَا قَالَ لَيْسَ صَلَاتُ وَسَلَامُ The person who does not have mercy among, over the young, he doesn't respect the elders and he doesn't respect the scholars, he is not from amongst us. He is not from amongst us, meaning his faith is lacking, his iman is lacking. 
these the three criteria that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. So this is something that we need to understand as a community, as individuals, that I need to learn knowledge and I need to facilitate that for my children and I need to make sure that my community is also led by a scholar and a alim who can you know, fulfill the right of the knowledge that, that needs to be done. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all the tawfiq to understand and practice what has been said and heard. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصلي على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى الملائكة المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا معهم اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا اللهم انكر لنا ولا تنكر علينا اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا اللهم آتنا ولا تحرمنا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في فلسطين وفي كشمير وفي سوريا وفي مصر وفي عراق وفي سومال وفي العالم كله واجعلنا من الذين يجاهدون في سبيلك حقا ولا يخافون فيك لوم تلائم آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي الجليل يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للصلاة هيا للفلاح هيا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Still want to do one sitting in Rahim Kumla, straight the lines, close the gaps, make sure the lines straight, make sure there are no gaps, and make sure the lines are filled up. Allah Akbar. Alhamdulillah, you're on Bill Halameen, a Rahman, you're Rahim, Maliki, you middeen. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنحمت عليهم وغير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنحمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله